Hi there, thanks for watching these Bible teaching videos. We're in Galatians, and Galatians chapter 2, and we are in the final section, uh, where we're now going to get into the very last two verses, verses 20 and 21, uh, where Paul is discussing the fact that uh, Christ lives in him. Let's read it together. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21, should I say, I should have read, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul is talking here about what happened at, at Calvary, what happened when the Lord Jesus died. He says, I am crucified with Christ. It's been pointed out many times that the idea of crucifixion is, is slightly different to the idea of dying. You can die, uh, not that it's a pleasant thing, but you, you die because it's the end of life. You die because it's natural causes. You die because disease takes its effect or old age or whatever. But crucifixion was a specific form of death. It was an act of condemnation. It was an act of judgment. It was a, a specific thing. It wasn't just dying, but it was execution. It was crucifixion. It was condemnation. So Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. And, and if you read through the earlier verses, he's saying, you know, the law condemned me. The law uh, said I was dead. The law condemned me to death. The law meant that I should face the penalty of God. But he said, actually, I'm crucified with Christ. So the Lord Jesus dealt with sin by his death. The holy, sinless, spotless one bore the judgment of God for sin so that I might have life. So he says, I'm crucified with Christ. I died to the law. I died to sin. I'm finished with the past. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm condemned with Christ and executed with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So how do I live? I live. Uh, you go to Romans and, and, and you, you're, you're buried with him in baptism and then you're raised to walk in newness of life. So there are principles that are being discussed here that are pictured in our baptism, that reflect what happened at the cross, that uh, teach us the principle of what God is doing in the life of a believer or what happened at their conversion. Nevertheless, I live. But notice what he says here in verse 20. I, it's not really me that's living in one sense, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. See, that's Romans 6, I walk in newness of life, raised in Christ. In fact, Romans 6, it, the, the Christian, the believer isn't seen as being raised, it's, it's Christ that's raised, the believer's in Christ. It's a picture that their life is all bound up in him, all wrapped up in him. So he's saying, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I read this uh, book and, and it was a conversation that was being depicted between Peter and Paul. And uh, it was really interesting the way it was put. I'm just going to read it to you. We can almost see Peter beam as he takes Peter by the arm. Sorry, we can almost see Paul beam as he takes Peter by the arm and says, don't you see, Peter? It's no longer the law, it's the Lord. Did you die for Jesus, Peter? Of course not. He died for you to take care of the past. To bring you salvation. Do you live for Jesus? No, no, of course not. He lives in you to take care of your present. He died on the cross to save you from your sin. He lives in you to save you from yourself. And the law's got nothing to do with it. I think that's J.B. Phillips who, who writes that. John Phillips uh, who, who writes that. In that conversation. And Paul is saying to Peter, listen, I'm crucified with Christ. I live, but it's not me that's living. So you don't need to live by the law because Christ lives in me. Christ is now the, the power that gives me life. Christ is the one that is giving me the, the ability to live on. I've put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm walking and living for him. Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh. So he says, I live in this world. Uh, he says, I'm in the sphere of physical things. The life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Or the idea seems to be, I live by faith which rests in the Son of God. It might be the idea that I live in a physical world, but I also live in the world of Christ. Um, I, I also live um, in faith. I live in the sphere of faith. I live in the world of faith. So I'm living in a physical world, but actually I'm living a double life, really. I'm living in Christ. It, he gives me the power to behave differently. He gives me the power to live and love and be and do all that is pleasing to God. He says, I live by the faith of the Son of God or 
in the faith which is in the Son of God. I live my life where he lives in me and through me he lives to bring glory to God and changes my behaviour, gives me strength to do what is right, helps me to live according to the perfect law of liberty, helps me to live the law of the love of the love that is the fulfilment of the law and helps me to live for the pleasure of God. Now we need to pick that up again because there's a little bit more we need to talk about in verse 20 and then go into verse 21. But keep with us. I trust that you find it helpful and most of all that you find it encouraging to know you. it's not you that achieves a life that is lived for the pleasure of God. It's Christ in you giving you the strength to live for his pleasure and for his glory.